good day we want to see how we can use first principle to get the derivative of y equals to sine x so the first thing we need to get in mind uh, is the principle governing with the, uh, the method we are about to use now so what, do, what does the first principle state it states that when there's an increment in the variable y there will be a corresponding increment in the variable x so from here if y is experiencing a small change in y s also will experience a small change so from this we have that the y is equal to sine x plus the x minus y and we already know from the question that y is equal to sine x so from here we can easily substitute the value of y as sine x in this equation so let's say this is equation one this is equation two so let's substitute or let's put y equals to sine x into equation two so we have that the y is equal to sine x plus the x minus Science. Let's say this is equation three. Now at this point, at this point from trig from trig ratio, from trig ratio, we have that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a. Now we want to substitute this equation into equation 3. Now if you watch properly here, you have sine into brackets x plus the x. So it's almost the same thing with this trig function. That is having x as a and the x as b. So if I substitute this into this equation, let's see what we have. We now have that the y is equal to sine x cos dx plus sine dx cos x minus sine x now from this point here you can add that the y is equal to sine x cos dx taking this to this other side we have minus sine x plus sine dx cos x so at this point you can see that the y equals to collecting like times by factorization we have sine x sine x are common so take one sine x out into brackets sine s cos the x divided by sine x will give us cos the x minus one because sine x divided by sine x will give us one plus sine x dx cos s now at this point, since we are looking for the y dx, we cannot divide through by the y by the x. So dividing through by the x, we have that small change in y over small change in x is equal to sine x into brackets cos dx minus one over the x plus sine dx cos s over the x. Now at this point, we, 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 we need to put in mind that as s, as the x tends to zero, automatically small change in y over small change in x will be equal to the y over the x. So at this point, we impute limit. So from here, we can see that the y the x now is tending to zero. So we can say that the y over the x, the limit as the x tends to zero. Will now give us sine x cos dx minus 1 over the x plus sine dx cos x over the x. Now, there's a very important key note we need to take into consideration. A very important key note we need to take into consideration. What are we going to do here right now? Now, observing from this point here. 
from um, lay down principles, we already know that sine the x over the x sine x over the x is one. That is sine the x over x over the x is one, and also cos the x minus one over the x is zero. So by imputing this function into this equation we have over here we cannot say that dy over the x that is the x is turning to zero so we cannot say that we have sine x over the x into brackets cos the x minus one plus sine the x over the x cos x so we have that this is zero so we have sine x to zero plus one plus cos x. That is sine x sine the x over the x is one. Why cos the x minus one over the x is zero. So zero times sine x will give us zero plus one times cos x will give us cos s. So cos s plus zero will give us cos x. So we cannot see from this that the derivative of sine x is equal to cos s. Thank you for watching this video. You can simply subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below the video to get more calculations.